And I guess, how do you keep the morale of the guys up after a really, you know, tough loss and just how the season has started? Yeah, I think there's some some uh, good leaders. Um, and, you know, in football, the, the, the team sees progression and they see regression on a day and weekly basis. So um, where the defense doesn't play well, the offense plays well, or they both play well, or there's special teams plays, there's always something that is improving. Um, you'd like to have all three phases improving and win games, but there's always uh, stuff to identify and fix. There's always stuff to uh, highlight and show that guys are moving in the right direction. You know, a la Brendan Lewis and Sean Dollars and some of the, you know, Delvon Campbell, some of the stuff that those guys did uh, in the game. And so you're, you're in a constant state of identifying problems, getting those guys in, identifying the good stuff, identifying that, and keeping guys moving towards the next game. And college athletes are probably the best at that, more than the coaches and the staff and everybody else. They, they came in Sunday ready to you know, see the good stuff and, and identify, and they want to be uh, coached. They want to know the truth, and, and uh, they see how close we can be, and they also see how far we are. So we got to fix that in between both those, uh, you know, the problems, the, the issues, and, and get more of the good stuff. You go back two games ago, probably the best defensive effort of the season, and then last game, the best offensive effort. Why has it been hard to pair the two and come out with a victory on the end? Yeah, it's something we're working on. You know, I, 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 I don't know. You know, it's, we've, uh, we've won the toss in six straight games, and uh, the first three we deferred, and the second three we took the ball and, you know, had differing successes, and the games aren't starting well. For whatever reason, we are not starting well, no matter how we do that. And that's got to be uh, on my shoulders first to get them uh, more ready to come out. But, um, you know, we won that toss Saturday. We took the ball. We had a good plan. We got uh, one first down, then we got we had to punt. And then two plays later, there was a touchdown. Almost the same scenario at Fresno State, although we had a nine-minute drive, came away without points. Two plays later, touchdown. Um, and we, we put ourselves behind the eight ball um, in, in a few of those games. And, and um, you know, that's complimentary football has got to be better. Uh, if we would have put halves of each one of those two games together, we had a really good team. And that's, that's our, that's our um, the negative of that. And that's also the optimism of, the, of what and how close we are to getting there, uh, specifically on offense. Now, that game was, was, uh, was not perfect, but there was a lot of stuff there uh, that looked like what we wanted to look like in Nevada football, and and the pistol, and the deep shots, and the run game, and the quarterback uh, being able to wheel and deal, and run it, and throw it, and do all the things that he did in that game. That's more like we wanted to look. And now we got to revert back and go over to the defensive side and not give up those big plays. We had three plays in that game that were over 200 yards of total offense on three plays. That absolutely will not win you football games. Speaking of the kind of slower starts, five of the six opening possessions for your opponent, they have scored touchdowns, yep. I guess. Are you trying to do anything different to try and get off to a better start? Or I guess what would you attribute those slower defensive starts to? Yeah, like I said, we've, we've done it both ways. We deferred and we've, we've taken the ball and, and uh, it has not worked out for us. Uh, on most of those drives, other than the, the uh, first two, the Fresno game and the last two games really, the other drives, we they we made guys move the ball. And the first drive of the game is always you're going to take their team's best shot. You're going to get what they practice. You're going to see all the formations. They're usually on a script. You've got to withstand those blows uh, as you go down the field and get them off schedule and get a stop. And we just haven't done that. And uh, you know, I, if I could put my finger on, it, I would. I would. We're we're constantly looking at. Uh, the play calls that we're using, the personnel that we've got on the field, uh, how we're how we're uh, responding to plays, and and the bottom line is when when uh, a team comes out and throws a two-yard flat route, you got to believe that you're going to get that thing tackled. Or like Saturday, they ran the same play the first two plays of the game. The first time we tackled it, the second time we missed two tackles, and the guy goes 65 yards for a touchdown. That stuff just absolutely cannot happen, no matter what defense is uh, called out on the field.
this week you guys are at San Diego State, kind of known for their defense, although that side of the ball, they've uh, been a lot weaker just on paper, I guess, what have been your thoughts looking at the Aztecs getting ready for this game? Yeah, it's the same, you know, Rocky, or Rocky, it's a Rocky long defense from, a, from a, well, a, a time ago, and they've run that defense for since he was the head coach there. It's a uh, very interesting 3-3 three, three, uh, defense with a lot of moving parts to it. They do a really good job on defense and special teams. Um, you know, they've settled in on a quarterback. Uh, he's he's similar to uh, a lot of the guys we've seen. He he uh, can run it. He's got he's a big guy. He's hard to tackle, um, but they they don't change. They're they're very they're a blue collar team. They don't make mistakes. They they blocked a punt uh, last week. They they got to, uh, Hawaii to drop a punt. They take advantage of all those situations, and you have to play clean football uh, to beat a Brady Hoke football team. And he's a defensive coach. They they know what they're doing. And um, you know yards are going to be hard to get, and you got to you got to take them when you can get them. You got to get points, and uh, you can't give up many plays on defense if you're going to stay in the game. One of your guys' top offensive players, Kalecki Latu, got injured against UNLV. Do you have an update on his ankle? Yeah, he's he's going to be out for a while. I don't know exactly how how long he's going to be out, but he's in a boot right now. So um, we'll see. Uh, how long that takes to to uh, get him back right, but I would I would think he'll be back this season. I don't know how many games he's going to miss here, um, but he will be back. It, luckily, it wasn't uh, uh, something that would keep him out for you know extended period like a, a knee injury or anything like that. Uh, coach, over the weekend, uh, highest offensive output in terms of total yards, and uh, at that post game presser, you said that you guys felt like you turned a corner offensively. Numbers aside, you know whether it's scheme production, whatever you want to call it. Why do you think you turned a corner offensively? Yeah, I just like the, you know when when you look at it with your eyeballs, it looks like what what we when we came here it looked like what we wanted an offense to look like in the in the pistol uh, with a lot of different moving parts, uh, quarterback run game active, uh, quick throws to the outside, and when uh, teams give it to you, giving them giving shots up there. Uh, being able to run the ball effectively, opening up lanes for Sean Dollars in there, uh, getting balls to the tight end. It, it was a big uh, step forward as far as spreading the ball across our offense to a lot of different positions, taking some shots and getting some shots with Del Vaughn out there, getting uh, Isaiah Crocker there at the end on one up the seam, getting Kalecki out there twice in the seam. Um, you know, being able to have Brendan run it with his feet and throw t touchdowns with his with his arm, that's what we envision, and and that's what the growth has to be as as they keep going. All the moving parts and the and the different uh, ease that the offensive line can block the plays, but the the different packaging we can put on it with personnel groups and all the different uh, motions and shifts and. RPOs that go along with that offense to make everybody feel like they're a part of it. I just felt like in the game that was a big step for our guys to be able to to show them that's what you know. Even at the mistakes we made, there was 500 yards of offense there, and and it could have easily been 700. And that's what that's what the future of this offense will be. Coach, when you go into the second half of the season, now on paper it seems like a more or just opens up a little bit more schedule wise. You're not playing a team that's, you know, in a top twenty five team that received AP votes or anything of that nature. Just when you look at the second half and how it stacks up for y'all, um, uh, what crosses your mind? Yeah, I haven't looked any farther than this Saturday and um, you know, we looked at at that schedule and and uh, you know, you play the game that comes up every every Saturday and we've got a really good uh, group at at their home field, and we haven't been down to this stadium, or I've never been in this stadium, and, and I know what their staff's about, and and a lot of those players on that team have been recruited by us here, uh, and at other places I've been, and and our our whole structure and focus is to get this team better, keep us in the game through three quarters, give us a chance to win in the fourth quarter, and then show that we've made that step to win a football game. And uh, once that happens, then we'll go on to the next game. But we got to try to be 1-0 this week. And, and uh, you know, whatever team's coming up is, is uh, the game that we got to get prepared for. And we've been working on that since yesterday and all day today uh, so far. And we're still in the middle of game planning right now. And coach, when you look at your guys, what gives you confidence that y'all can still turn this thing around? I, I, I just I just see our players. If you watch the game, you just watch them from start to finish. They've got great resiliency. Um, we don't do things uh, great all the time, but we play hard all the time. We play tough all the time. We don't have 
uh, a lot of dumb things happening on the football field. We had a very unfortunate, unsportsmanlike uh, in the fourth quarter, uh, very questionable with what was going on over there. But um, our guys don't do uh, things that uh, that you would expect of a team that if they start to lose focus, they play hard all the way to the end. We're still scoring points. Um, we're still playing defense. Um, you know, we we. I'm still trying as the head coach to go for it on fourth down, to get the onside kick, to do the things that we have to try to do um, because we're going to need to in the future. And we got to show them these situations. So whatever the game situation is, our guys just play hard. And and the uh, the feeling in the in the locker room and how many guys came and told me they were they were sorry because they missed this tackle or they didn't get that catch or they fumbled the ball. I got Kalecki Latu in a boot, you know, apologizing for fumbling the football. I'm like, dude, like that was a monster. Like you don't get in positions like that. I love you, you know, for for catching that ball and taking that freaking hit. You know, that's that shit happens in games and happens in life, and you got to fight that adversity. And the, the defense came right back out and played and got a stop there. So. Um, that's that's my optimism with this football team, and I got to coach them better, get them in positions to win football games. I mean, given the long losing streak, why do you think they are fighting so hard throughout those sixty minutes, and they haven't really given up on either this season yeah. or this tenure or whatever? Well, I think they trust the staff, and you know, I think they more than anybody know what this program was was like the day we took over, and they know uh, the plan, and we we constantly tell them what the plan is and what we're doing and the, what the build is, and they have that trust and. For the most part, in that locker room, they've been, uh, and in the meetings, they've been outstanding, and that's why I felt so p- badly for for these guys because they deserve as hard as they work and the optimism they have, and as hard as they play, they deserve deserve to start seeing the benefits of this, and we're seeing small small portions of that on both sides of the ball and on special teams, and now we have to put it together. I'm sure when you guys started 2-0 and last season, you didn't envision what's happened since then with 16 straight losses. I guess how have you kind of managed that personally, you know, trying to get this team to a win? Yeah, I have a lot of strong support around me. I've, I, I, I feed off our, our players. I feed off the guys that I see their faces every morning. And I know that our plan works, and I've got great confidence in myself in this program. And I know that what we've put together with facilities and recruiting and our, and our infrastructure and I know if we stay the course, this thing's going to turn around. And when it does, it's going to be very powerful. I know there's like a lot of hot seat talk. I mean, uh, do, do you feel like you need to show something to administration here over these next six games to continue forward? Or do you not you know, yeah, allow yourself to go there? I feel great responsibility to win every time we go on the football field. This is a, it's a program I've got great, uh, great love for and a lot of time in. And I've, I, tried, I treated it right when I left the first time. And I'm going to treat it right uh, when I turn it around this time. Have you had a you know conversation or discussion with anybody who's gone through something similar with this in terms of losing streak? That's given you advice on how to get through it, or yeah, um, yeah I talk to people all the time. Like, you know, there's coaches uh, every week. There's winners and losers, and uh, some of my best friends are are guys that are in the coaching profession and and are head coaches. And you know, you look all across the the uh, landscape, and and uh, you know, I look at it in small compartmentalized, but. You know, there's teams, uh, you know, in Miami and and uh, USC this weekend, and you know, Boise at the end. And like, there's there's games that that you feed off of the win and and how the the Stanford came back, and then there's the other side of that, the teams that that you've missed a hail mary or you didn't make the right calls. Like, we're constantly learning on this, and if we worry about the future, the past, like we have to stay in the present or whatever's going on never changes so you know I learn from everything and I talk to guys that I trust and and I get you know I get I can't tell you how many texts I get from former players after after football games that that know what I'm about and know what this program is about and know and and look and and that feeds me and my family feed me and my players in that locker room and the coaches I work with you know I told them after the game it's it's uh I've got big shoulders, man. I've I've lived through adversity and and uh, I thrive on it and and uh, I'd rather not have any more of it. So we got to win this weekend. Do you feel like it's something as simple as you get one win and, and maybe it does turn around? Have you been in a situation like that? I know you know beginning at Washington State wasn't easy with Coach Leach, but right. do, I mean, do you feel like once that 
that victory happens that these guys will will be able to reel some off? Yeah, I just I just have a strong feeling from watching, uh, you know how that worked with Coach Leach when we first went to Oregon. Uh, they weren't at the expectations that Oregon was, and we we got that to a Rose Bowl and two Pac-12 championships. So I, I've seen coaches and I've been in a, these adverse situations where when you know your process, you have confidence in your process and you drive it and you don't quit, keep changing and you take every shot and you keep moving forward. You don't go take the shot. Oh, shit, we're going to be a wishbone this week. Oh, we take a shot. We're going to change to the, you know, the radar defense this week. You stay the course. You trust what you do and you believe in it. Usually it works out for you. And I know there's been a lot of chatter about changing your coaching staff or things of that nature. Obviously, you haven't done that. You've kept the course. I mean, what, what message do you hope that sends that you believe you know, to, the, to your players yeah. that you have the right people in place and, and you will get there eventually? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, just watch you know, the offense on Saturday. They did a great job. Our defense has been good at times. And, and over the time that we've been here, our defense has, has progressed and done a lot of good things. Our special teams have been very good this year. We, like, we gave up the one punt return. Uh, it was a you know, a, a moving parts on that play, but our special teams have been very sound this year. So I have no um, no interest in talking about that kind of stuff. I believe in my staff, and I know our players do. When you look at San Diego State, obviously you got to play this quarterback last year, and, and he's a very um, versatile and dynamic player, I guess. Uh, what would you learn about trying to defend him that you're going to try and uh, apply to this game? Yeah, the biggest thing is he's hard to tackle. You know, he's, he's got a very strong lower body. You have to really wrap him up to get him on the ground. He's a big guy. Um, he's got he's a lefty, which you know changes you a little bit on on different things. But he can he can take guys on his body and keep throwing the ball and have he has good enough arm strength to get the ball there. He can run it. They've got five different running backs. He's got some really good tight ends that he that he uh, has around him to help it to dump the ball off to. Probably the best tight end in the in the conference uh, is one of them. But I just, I just think he's seen the ball, he's seen the game as a defensive player. He knows where plays are supposed to hit, and if plays break down, he knows where defenses are susceptible, and he gets to those spots because he's, he's been on that side of the ball. So he's quite a, uh, a dynamic guy. Uh, when you look at your defense, I mean, obviously a little step back here against UNLV after the Fresno game. Was there something in particular that you know led to those big plays and a little bit of that regression game over game? Yeah. I, I, I wish I had put my finger on it, but we had, you know, we had a deep ball. Um, we had a run that, that hit on a blitz that hasn't hit on it and went down the sideline there right after half, and we thought we could get right back in the game. It was, it was more a, a deal of, um, you know, teams are allowed to make big plays. Teams are allowed to have explosives here and there, but teams aren't allowed to have explosives that go for a touchdown every time. And that's where we have got to get better, whether it's angles, whether it's tackling, whether it's just missing tackles. Um, we've got to take a, a better uh, knowledge into games of what our assignments are, what the techniques are, coach those as coaches, and make sure that our players understand the deficiencies of, the, of each defensive call and we got to be there. And if a play does break because it's the right offensive play, it's got to be a 10-yard gain and not a 60-yard gain. And that's um, happened too many times easily, even in games that we performed well. We could have been so much better if we just get the ball on the ground. So we're really working on that right now of, of getting them in the right package, right eye discipline, so that not, not happen um, you know, going forward. Any more questions, Coach? Coach, thank you. All right, guys.